Welcome back to my Cloud Plus refresh in 2024. Do the new test. So uh, once again, we've just finished deployment and the hands-on. We're going to be covering operations. So that will be these four things right here. Um, so cloud operations, let's go. So things we'll cover. Given a scenario, configure appropriate resources to achieve observability. Given a scenario, configure appropriate scaling approaches. Given a scenario, use appropriate backup and recovery methods. And given a scenario, scenario manage the life cycle of cloud resources. Lots of scenarios. So be prepared. Um, so thinking about given a scenario, configure the appropriate resources to achieve observability. So whenever they say given a scenario, you need to remember cost, policies, procedures, um, so features and functionality, what possibilities are there, what do they have in there? But so, um, and then when it comes to achieving observability and configuring them, have you designed your system uh, to be observable? What options are there? Um, are the proper things being monitored do you know when something scales up or down? Do you know when it's happy or not so happy? Um, do you keep track of resource utilization? Um, are security events being logged when people log in or log out or view and access uh, certain data? Um, are you paying attention to where people are logging in from? Um, are your infrastructure as code? I did IOC. I need to fix that. Um, are your infrastructures uh, as code I, um, pipelines letting you know how they are doing? Um, do you know the process of them? What if something stops logging? That's one of the things that often uh, causes problems because people don't notice there's a problem if it doesn't let you know there's a problem. Um, so are you keeping track of things? And if they stop talking, do you notice? Scaling strategy, strategies. Um, configure, given a scenario, configure the appropriate um, scaling strategies. Are you going to scale vertical? So if you need more demand, if the demand comes, just going to put on a bigger box, right? Um, that's a acceptable solution. Uh, but it limits you to the size of the boxes. Um, so maybe you're going to scale horizontally. So you're just going to create new boxes. So uh, when I do that, I usually try to follow kind of the RAID methodology. Remember, RAID 0 is you can handle more load. Um, and then RAID 1 was mirroring. Okay, So that's great if you don't need a lot. But if it's a big system, that's when you start to think about RAID 5, RAID 6, right? So uh, RAID 5, when it comes to disk, is where you have parity. So if one goes away, you're fine. So that I think of that as n plus one, right? I have enough systems that if I lose one, it's no big deal. Then RAID six is n plus two. So uh, I have all the systems I need plus two extra in case one goes away. Uh, and and then uh, man, uh, managing that with the course of load balancer. So by the way, the cool thing about scaling horizontally um, it allows you to be able to remove an item, patch it, and put it back in. You can't do that when it's vertical. If it's just one system, you can't remove it from the pool, patch it, and put it back in. So, uh, But there are some systems that don't scale well horizontally, so we scale them vertically. Um, but whenever possible, horizontally is usually better. So, And coming to the next one, are you going to scale automatic or manual? Well, automatic is usually better, but you've got to be careful because what if it just goes crazy and scales up a ton? So oftentimes you put 
brakes on it in certain ways. Uh, but sometimes it's just uh, manuals the way that you have to do it. So load balancing is really needed if you're going to be doing any horizontal scaling. So um, are you reporting metrics? Do you know if things are healthy? If you don't know if they're healthy or not and you're load balancing, you might be sending stuff to a system that's not happy. So some people are getting errors and some people are not. So making sure you know if it's healthy, making sure you understand how it handles the load so that you can increase and solve the right bottlenecks instead of someone saying, hey, let's just throw more of whatever at it. Um, making sure you're approaching it and, and fixing the problem, not just throwing more resources at it. Uh, because if you're just throwing more resources, that's a cost issue. So, and you do have to consider cost when it comes to any of these. Okay. So, once again, given a scenario, use the appropriate backup and recovery method. So, thinking about backup strategies. So, there's lots of different options. So, you can do full backups, incremental backups, differential backups. Uh, you can even have replication kind of going into play. So full backups is where you have a complete copy of all the data. That takes a long time. So that's why you often have um, uh, incrementals from that point in time so that you can have the most recent up, uh, up to date. So you don't want to come get to a point in time where you're losing data. If you think about this from the disaster recovery, this, you're thinking about the recovery point objective at what point in time uh, versus the recovery time is how much time it takes you to recover um, so the recovery point how much time how much data we're willing to lose and hopefully we're getting to this day and age that that's almost none because there's some pretty cool things we can do now um, recovery methods how are you going to recover uh, do you understand it do you understand how to have you actually went through the process um, when it comes to replication, how are you replicating it? If the data that maybe a hackers take over and they destroy your data, is it going to destroy your, 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 repli uh, your replica? So making sure you keep backups separate from your repli uh, replica so that you can recover. So storage solutions, what are you going to keep or infrastructure are you going to keep it in a different cloud or are you keep it in the same cloud are you keeping some of it local and some of it in the cloud uh, how are you uh, keeping it so remember you should always have uh, multiple backups and at least one of them should be in a different location than all your others um, okay and make sure you test 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 um, a backup does you no good if you can't recover it, if you can't actually go through. Uh, and I've seen that in my career. Okay, so given a scenario, manage the life cycle of cloud resources. So this starts from the beginning of an idea all the way to the death of a system. So how do you gather your um, requirements? Um, so make sure, how do you make sure that you're meeting the requirements throughout the, all the stages? Once you know how you, uh, the requirements, what, what technology are you going to use? How are you going to build it? How are you going to provision it? How are you going to architect it? So it meets not only the needs of the project, but the needs of the organization as well. Um, is it going to be monitored? Well, how is it going to be monitored and maintained? It needs to be monitored and it needs to be maintained. S computer systems are not perfect. Uh, just because it's now working doesn't mean it's not going to have bugs. So who's trying to identify problems and fix them before hackers find them? Um, if you get unexpected load, how are you going to handle that? Uh, what if you find out that maybe some of the code that you wrote needs to be fixed because it kind of works but uh, sometimes it's kind of slow and if just with just a little bit of extra time and effort you can significantly speed that up 
So optimizing your your code. Uh, and how are you going to back up and recover it? So uh, once again, manage the life cycle. So a, as you're oper operating it, you need to be monitoring, uh, improving, backing up, and recovering. Uh, up until the day that it's decided that the system can go away. And at that point in time, how are you going to archive it? So just in case you need some data from it, how are you going to have that data and how are you going to decommission the system? So, well, uh, thank you for staying with me for another one. We'll see you in the next one.